Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Demery and I'm the founder of MissDiamondRing.com. Today we're going to be talking about ovals. Ovals! Ovals are the most popular shape this year and last year. This is 2020, last year's 2019. I foresee this trend continuing because it's not a trend. Ovals are timeless, they're classic, and they do have a little bit of an old world feel, which I love. Now, the thing that you have to keep in mind with ovals is that there are a lot of ugly ovals out there. It's important that you know that because when you find a beautiful oval, it is a needle in a haystack. A lot of ovals are pointy. A lot of them are too narrow. A lot of them are a little bit too wide. A lot of them have a thing called a bow tie. A bow tie is literally the shape of a dark bow tie and it's a shadowing in the center of the stone. Now, you don't see this on a round because a round is a perfect prism. But when you take that and you stretch it, you get a shadowing effect in a lot of cases. So to find an oval that doesn't have a prominent bow tie is that is top. That's what we call top make or the X factor. Now, in thinking about all of the C's, right? All of those delicious C's out there, you've got cut, carat weight, how, you know, how big is the stone? Color, how white is the stone? Is there any warmth or yellow in it? Clarity, which is, are there any imperfections or blemishes in the stone? Certification, who certified the stone? Different certification companies have different grading standards. And then of course, character. So I have six C's. Most people will say there are four C's, but the, the other two, which are certification and character, those are very, very, very important. Um, some stones just have the X factor and that is only what I source. Now with ovals, when we're talking about, let's start with carat weight, because how large and a, a diamond shows is very important to, I would say 90% of my clients. Ovals have larger spreads than other shapes. So this means they look bigger. They look bigger. If you think about the oval, it's right. Like here's the bottom of the oval and it's like this. It's a shallower cut as opposed to a round or a cushion, which takes up more rough diamond by the shape, by its shape. Cushions are a little bit bottom heavy, but ovals, most of the diamond is on the top, which is why it looks larger. That means if you have a two carat oval next to a two carat cushion, the oval will look, will look larger. Now, um, it is important to uh, keep in mind that carat weight is not, um, is not really the measure of how big a stone is. What tells you how big a stone is and how big it will show on her hand is the millimeters, the actual millimeters on the certificate. Um, because you could have a four carat oval and a four carat oval and one will look bigger than the other. How can that be? Because four carats is the actual weight of the stone, but what will tell you how tall it is, how wide it is, what the ratio of that stone is, is the millimeters. So that is really important as you're searching, um, it's really important to keep in mind. So uh, another thing that you want to be mindful of is ratio. The ratio of an oval means how wide is it and how narrow is it. The ideal range to stay within is 135 to 145 unless otherwise specified. And I say that because not every woman is a size five finger. Some women have a size seven finger. And what you wanna think about is in looking at her finger, women want finger coverage. They want the stone to look bigger if possible. So if like, for instance, I am a size 4.75. If you have a, let's say a three carat oval on me, it's going to look larger on me than if I were a size seven finger, which means I've got more finger to cover. So in that case, when you're thinking about ratio, you want to go a little bit wider of a ratio on a larger finger. That way you have more finger coverage. Or you want to do a three stone or a halo, which will fill in more on the sides. This is if it's important to her. Again, what I say means nothing if she says, I don't like it that way, I don't want that. Because at the end of the day, a happy wife is a happy life and you do wanna make sure she's happy and she's getting what she wants. 
So a ratio is something to take into consideration. It is a case by case basis, but the standard rule is 135 to 145. I personally like the 135 to 14 ratio where it's a little bit wider, but you still have the elongation of an oval. Now you may have heard of movals, which is a marquise and an oval. And that's when the ratio is like close to one six. It's like a kind of a tall, skinny oval. Uh, not my cup of tea, but a lot of people like it. So, you know, get what you like. Now, when it comes to color, the color of an oval um, is, is very important because ovals show color more than other shapes. An oval eye color will show more of that eye color more than a round or an emerald cut, which don't show color as much. There are all these different reasons behind it, but it all comes down to light refraction and the shape. So ovals refract more white light. So if you have more warmth in it, it's, it's going to show a little bit more. So ideally, when you have the color scale, right, you've got D, it starts at D, E, F. D, E, and F is colorless. You're going to pay top dollar for colorless all day long because it's so rare. Now you have F, uh, D, E, F, and then G, H, I, J. G, H, I, J is considered near colorless. Places like Tiffany carry all the way up to J color. Now um, on an oval, I wouldn't go lower than an eye color and only an eye color if it's like a top eye color. Now what I mean by that is it's possible if you have someone who knows what they're doing to source an eye color that faces up like a G color. Why? How is this so? Well, when GIA does their grading, they have to grade to the lowest common denominator of the stone. And that means if, the, if underneath the stone, um, it's an eye color, but on the top of the stone, let's say it shows up like a G color, they still have to grade it an eye color because that's the lowest color of the stone. So um, it's actually a win if you can get an eye color that faces up much wider because then you're paying for an eye color. Um, but what's also important to keep in mind is if your girl wants a setting that is rose gold or yellow gold, you can go a little bit lower in color on the stone and it's not as noticeable. Okay, so that's color. Next, we're gonna talk about cut. Cut, light refraction. What's more important on a diamond than light refraction? How it's cut, the symmetry, the polish, so you get maximum sparkle. I have a client who, who said, I want the diamond to be so sparkly that when the waiter comes over, like he drops the lobster bisque. <laughs> I love that, okay? The whole point of a diamond is to get sparkle. So the way that the cut works on, like you've heard of triple X, excellent probably. A triple excellent can only happen on a round because a round, again, a perfect prism, you can measure and achieve perfection on that. But on an oval cut, it's, uh, you really, it really comes down to polish and symmetry and, and what is beautiful in an oval can be different from one person to the next. So it's a little bit more subjective, but um, you really want to be in the excellent to very good range. So, you know, because the symmetry will allow better scintillation, more brilliance, more fire on the stone. I will say I have sold and seen uh, beautiful ovals that might be a very good and good grading and they're just stunning. So it really is a case by case basis and it all comes down to getting the best item in your budget. But if you can stay excellent to very good on the polish and the symmetry, you are in very good hands. Now when it comes to the clarity of your oval, I am okay with anything from VS1 to SI2. Why SI2? Well, let me tell you something. Ovals are really phenomenal when it comes to hiding inclusions. And that is because of the facet structure. It's a brilliant cut. It sparkles like crazy. So you can hide these little inclusions. Now, I'm not saying that you're buying <clears throat> a, a low quality or low grade stone when you're looking at SI1, SI2. I'm saying, you shouldn't pay for something that you can't see. So if I hold up to an SI1 and a VVS2 and to the naked eye, they look exactly the same, but one is 10,000 more than the other. Um, I'm sorry, like why would you pay more for a VVS2 if you can get an iClean SI1? Yeah, I, it's just silly. So, and this comes from someone who's worked at Harry Winston. Look, I'm all about 
quality, luxury, getting the best of the best. But I'm also about shopping smart, you know, like that extra 10,000 could be put toward one more carrot or, you know, a higher color grade. So why wouldn't you want to do that? Now, finding an, a, an eye clean SI1, SI2 is not easy to do because there are only certain inclusions that allow you to, that are invisible, right? They're, they're white inclusions, they're not visible to the naked eye, and you would need a 10 power magnifying glass to see them in the first place. So that's what I source from my clients. But if you can stay in the VS2, VS1, VS2 range budget-wise and, and you're happy with everything and you feel confident, that's the way to go. But if you're in a, in a pinch in terms of budget and you're trying to hit this mark and you're right here um, in terms of carrot weight or color, SI1, SI2 is totally fine as long as it's not a dirty stone when you look at it and you don't have a big carbon spot on the center of the table, okay? It's good to get inclusions that are on the perimeter of the stone. Now that is clarity. Um, let's see, what else do I want to talk about with ovals? So we've talked about bow tie, we've talked about ratio, we've talked about cut grade, carrot weight, color, clarity. So I guess we'll finish with uh, the certification. Now the certification on an oval, I always recommend GIA. That is the Gemological Institute of America. They're based out of Carlsbad. They are the badass in the biz because they are strict. They have the highest standards, and if they tell you you're getting a GVS2, you are getting a GVS2. There's no bones about it. There are other companies that, when you buy stones that are certified by, let's say, EGL or um, you know some other ones, it's going, going to be a little bit less for the stone, for like the same GVS2. However, their GVS2 might actually, this, they have like kind of wiggle room, you know? It's like the Abercrombie and Fitch, um, Abercrombie and Fitch sizing, like we're not all a zero, right? Like they kind of, they kind of um, got a little, a little too lenient on that. So a GVS2 with one of these other companies might actually be an H, an H or an I, maybe a, you know, SI1, SI2. So as long as you look at it and you see it and you're fine with it, I mean, I guess who cares who grades it if you're happy with it. However, um, you know, down the road, if you ever needed to resell it, a GIA certified stone is always the best way to go. So I believe that wraps up my, uh, my little oval 101. And uh, what I will say is ovals are so great because you can create the most beautiful settings around them. I love a three stone setting. Three stone setting is past, present, and future, right? Like, which is such a powerful thing. A lot of people do that for anniversaries, for your 10 year anniversary upgrade, but it's great as, as you know, the engagement ring because I mean, it talks, it's like that, that stone embodies your love story, what brought you together and where you're at right now in your relationship, and then the intentions on where you want to go in the future. I just love three stone rings. And beautiful three stone side stones for an oval would be um, a pear shape, ovals, like ovals on the side, half moons, or epaulettes. Those are my four favorites. And, um, you know, of course you could do tapered baguettes, you could do so many things, but those are just my, my personal favorites based on everything I've seen the thousands of rings I've, I've worked with and sold. And of course, like the most popular setting right now is the Pave Diamond Solitaire with a hidden halo. A hidden, ha hidden halo is um, that, that halo of diamonds underneath the basket. It's not on top of the stone, it's underneath holding the basket. Now, anytime I work with a client, once we source the stone, we hand make the setting. The setting has to be handmade. Do not ever let anyone give you a free setting because you're basically throwing your diamond away. Why? Because popping a diamond into a pre-mounted setting means it's not secure. A setting needs to be hand carved around the millimeters and the dimensions of the stone. I've had friends who were clapping their hands and their stone went flying across the room. We do not want that to happen. So uh, bespoke settings are the only way to go. And if you're interested in working with me or learning more about our process, feel free to go to missdiamondring.com or email sparkle at missdiamondring.com. Uh, what I love more than anything is to get to know my couples and learn about their love story and really like put energy behind the stone. You know, uh, diamonds are crystals and crystals amplify energy. 
And if you don't believe me, and you think that sounds kind of crazy, think about the quartz. The quartz crystal is what keeps the watch you're wearing telling time. If you have a battery operated watch, it is a quartz crystal in that watch that the, literally the molecular structure and the symmetry oscillation of the stone is what tells time. They're, they're creating computers off of, um, off of quartz. Now I'm going off on a tangent, but I cannot stress enough how powerful, how symbolic, how much emotion and energy goes into an engagement ring. You are not buying a car. This is not a commodity. This is a once in a lifetime piece that, that is the greatest emotional, spiritual, everything symbol of your love. So honor it, keep it sacred and, um, and enjoy your love story truly. Okay, I hope this was helpful. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and have a beautiful day.